Hi, before enjoying this chapter, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell. Enjoy! Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. So I have uh, Caroline, Amani, and Nadine. Right? Um, I like to start. Th this comes, I wouldn't say, um, complementary on the masculinity uh, special, but an essential one. It was just a matter of time when I go to the masculinity video and when do I go to the femininity. Um, and I'm glad to have. Uh, a great uh, collection of experiences, different age groups, different backgrounds. But I want to start with uh, who are you and how would you define, if you can? I'll start here. Who am I? I'm a work in progress. I think I've changed a lot in my 50s. So I'm a very different person now uh, since my kids have left home. And I feel that I'm in the process of building my own identity and becoming the person that I may have always been, but never had the opportunity to be. Very interesting. So, so blooming late, but beautifully, I would say. Thank you. <laughs> okay. It's very kind. Amani. Um, well, I'm 21 years old. And I am a body positivity advocate. Uh, I, d I didn't even find that in the research, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, I'm the first Kirby model of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Is that official? Yes, it is. Okay. I worked on it. Okay. <laughs> and um, I'm under construction, I would say. Mm -hmm. I'm, at the end of the day, I'm very young and I entered the industry at a young age. So um, discovering new, discovering new parts of myself, discovering uh, a new identity. Um, I feel like I have two worlds in one body. So there's like the Ameni student university and then there's the Ameni in the industry. Mm. So it's... Uh, Is it the same Amani? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, it's a different person. Mm. Nadine. Uh, I'm a designer. I've created a brand uh, like 14 years back. Uh, it's about Arab identity. Uh, it's a very uh, close thing to, to my heart, so it's, it's part of who I am actually. Um, I've had a nice journey in life, uh, being a mother, being uh, a wife, uh, being a girlfriend, being a sister, being uh, you know, uh, a daughter. So um, who I am could not be pinpointed to one thing, but it's a series of, it's a journey that I've been through since I was born, whether it's the war, traveling, getting married, coming to Dubai, establishing myself here. So it's that kind of a beautiful journey, the good and the bad of it, that makes me who I am today. Okay. Um, since it's a femininity specific topic, I don't mind us going in branches and I'll, I'll try my best to bring it back. But I want to lay the groundwork and just say, and this is open, it's an open question. So interrupt each other, discuss. Um, femininity in this day and age, what does it mean to you? How do you see it? What, what is the meaning? Because the, the challenging thing with words such as masculinity as femininity and many other words, even love, the word love, each person will give you a, such a Absolutely. varied answer. You say hate, probably you get more agreement. So there are certain words that even if I Google, doesn't give me a, a clear answer and I think that's why they're interesting words and they are also confusing words. So how do you yeah. see it? Yeah. I mean uh, for me it's uh, femininity uh, when, I, when, when I think about it uh, you have different categories in that but what it represents for me is actually elegance uh, and when I say elegance it's not what you actually wear or um, it's about how you it's actually how you behave um, as a woman, femininity represents this elegance. And this is how we, I would like to portray or feel that I've portrayed femininity in this way. How I behave in certain um, 
situations is always with elegance, whether it's a good situation or a bad one. That's a good lesson to learn. Yeah. I think for me, it's more of personality. Um, I'm, I tend sometimes, like, on what Nadine said about elegance, like, for me, if it's a bad situation, it's very hard for me to, to say it in an elegant way. <laughs> Because, <laughs> <laughs> because if I'm pissed off and yeah. I'm bothered about something, yeah. I don't have time to be like, I want to say it in elegant. I think it comes with age. Yeah. I think it helps. I, uh, it's definitely come later on. It's not a yeah, you're too emotional in the moment. And yeah. yeah. And so do imagine. you agree, Caroline, that it's uh, elegance based? I think it is. But for me, it's it's my husband walking on the road the side of the traffic. My son walks on the side of the traffic. They carry the bags. I, I think I'm very feminine. I'm not a feminist, I would say. And I believe men have their jobs and women have their jobs. Mm. And for me, that is femininity. So everything that... Not everything has. I mean, job, what you think a man should take the role of, the woman is the other. That's what you're saying? Yes, and I'm not saying downtrodden, uh, respected, yeah. I think. The elegant point is a tricky one. What if a woman is not elegant? In her behavior? So she's not feminine? Um, I, you said to me. Yeah. So I'm asking you this question. Yeah, if you, I mean, no. There are it ta- different it types. It wouldn't be not feminine because femi- if, you, if you think of uh, the word femininity, so you will probably see tenderness, you will see um, emotions, Hmm. you will see uh, softness, you will see respect, you will see motherhood, you will see, depending on how you want to look at it, then you can categorize it. But for me, it's elegant. It's elegance on how a woman would behave in any type of situation. And, And also in how she would probably raise her men at home to be is also for them to be elegant by respecting women. But that does not remove from her femininity or is not added to her womanhood. So it's it's a different thing. We have to have a hard back and a soft front as, Mm. as, as women who are feminine. They have to be soft and open and welcoming and gentle and kind and all of those things. But you have to have a really hard backbone at the same time, I think. I... Personally, for me, I don't like showing. I I don't feel like being soft or like emotional is is a good thing. I, if anything, like I'd rather be tough than like. Do you think uh, being, Do you yeah. think being soft, um, uh, soft spoken or soft mannered is a sign of weakness that somebody can take advantage of? That's why. Not a sign of weakness, but I think not everyone deserves to see it. Hmm. So if you don't if you don't know me and I just met you, I'm not gonna I'll be nice and respectful to you, but I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna give you too much. I'm mm. not gonna give you too much of my attention. I'm not gonna give you too much of my time because I don't know you at the end of the day. So I'd rather take my time getting to know you than with time open up a bit more and more. But I would never open up to someone directly as soon as I see them. Or I don't think the point is opening up. It's not, it's not, yeah, but like, it's just about you, because you said about soft, you know, having a hard back and mm. being soft, like, for me, it's being hard both sides. Mm. That, that's, that's what I meant. Yeah, I, it's I'm an interesting like, thing. I'm like mm. that, my first, like, yeah, I think no, a lot of people are like that. Kind of yeah, like, Nadine knows me very well. I'm the kind of character, I don't have a soft spot. I'm very, I don't have empathy, actually, with people. If anything, it's very hard for me to have empathy or feel bad, or I, I'm a very, Tough person, but, uh, to so me, that, that's also that's okay. Yeah. Because you cannot, you can't know everything from the age of twenty-one. You need to learn. You need to have experiences that make you the person you are later on. True, hundred percent. At twenty-one, already at twenty-one, I feel like I know too much, and I'm already, I'm maybe twenty-one by paper, but mentally and my life experiences, I'm definitely thirty-five. <laughs> no, no, hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> Do you think having that kind of uh, attitude that you know too much lessens your chances of learning and being a good sponge? I mean, does it bother you if somebody says, oh, you're to- only 21? When she says, oh, you're only 21, does it bother you? It, I didn't mean that. No, no, no I didn't. I'm, I'm not trying to no, cause no, a problem. No, 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 I'm, no, no, I'm really no. saying, because I met, there are two extremes. 
you tell a, a woman who's in her later age, you say, what's your age? She's like, why would you want to know my age? Yeah. And they don't, some women don't like it, some yeah. celebrate it. And you tell a young person, oh, you're only young. Mm. Uh, you tell an 18 year old that, especially with, with men and boys, and you know this, they, they'll be like, yeah, so what? They'll take offense to it. So yeah. I'm saying when she says, you still have more. But, but for, for what I was saying was that I didn't, I don't believe she has to know everything at her yeah. age. It's okay to still be learning. She mm. has years ahead of her to learn different to soften, yeah. to soften <laughs> on the inside. She was, everyone wants yeah. to become softer, but yeah. Um, no, but you protect but yourself. I, yeah. yeah, I have a very good protection career, shield. Like you feel you have to probably. Um, not, no, even before my career, I was always like this. I was, mm. al I was always like this. Like since I'm a baby, I've always been like tough, closed, strong. So. So genetically, you think you're, you're tough. Not because of school or high school. Or oh, I don't think I know I am. Okay. So do you scare like, other women then? Yeah, 100%. Do you? Uh, because I, like in uni, like even guys tell me you're intimidating. Mm. And my, yeah, like she knows <laughs> that. I move my chair Nadine now. Nadine knows that. Like in my generation of people, every high school in Dubai knows a man is intimidating. Never be on her bad side. Like okay. always stay on a man's good side. Do you ever hit anyone? <laughs> No. no, no, my words are strong enough. I don't okay. need to. <laughs> Nadine, if your um, criteria is elegance and Amani is shouting at somebody, would you? <laughs> and then would that reduce in your eyes her femininity just because she's not elegant in your perspective? I wouldn't say reduce, but I would probably advise her to, um, to take it easy. Hmm. What she does, to be completely fair, like every day of my life. No, why am I asking? <laughs> Look, I, I, I like both perspectives, but I also think, is uh, is the whole world uh, vanilla? No, is it all, what, only this means you're feminine, this means you're no, not? No. Or there is the rowdy no, uh, feminine, and there's the crazy feminine, and there's the calm, and there's the wild, and there's the introverted. And yeah, but for me, it's, it was elegance. I go back. I to like that you to, stick to, to it. To, yeah. to, to that. Yeah. Obviously, our culture is when you ask, if you ask me, uh, or if you ask my mother, probably what would femininity be if, to her, she would probably tell you motherhood. Mm. So you have that so. kind of a thing. Uh, even though she is. She, but she, she's not going to be a soft mom. She is not. No. She's not. <laughs> definitely if she's not. she knows me more than anyone, but honestly. But even my mom, she knows my mom. And obviously, my mom is also hardcore. But yeah. She has that elegance. And although she might swear or you know uh, shout at someone but still she has a certain elegance yes. so, so that does not mean that you're not always elegant you mm. know even the way you probably portray yourself uh, the way you talk to people um, i'm just not saying like on the low tone or anything so yeah, that's really interesting because i'm trying to think of my mother and as to whether i think of her as being very feminine that is not something that i would use that word? For my mother, yes. Mm. Um, but she's incredibly elegant. Um, I don't think she has ever shouted at anybody. No, my mom did. <laughs> she doesn't. Same. She wouldn't shout Arabs. at anybody. Um, but why wouldn't you think that the word femininity applies to your mother? I, I, it's just not a... If you ask me to give you, I don't know, three or four words that my mother was, I, don't, I just don't think... Feminine is, is one of them. I, I don't know if I think of it as being a bit pretty, maybe, just sort of a little bit. It's hard to categorize the word because it can exactly, be a really yeah. pretty dress looking so feminine, but then you open your mouth. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, true. So would we, that's why I said personality. Fair? Would, we, would it be fair to say if a woman is not feminine, then she's masculine? So would you say your mother is more masculine than feminine? No, she's not. So where does she that? Isn't. It depends yeah. how you identify feminine. Correct. Yes. This is a, my this daughter is, is very feminine. Mm. Very. Um, she's also very pretty. So why would she fall under your category of feminine? My daughter. Yes. Is she girly? Yeah, your daughter is girl. very she's feminine. A, yeah. when you she see wore her, a tutu when she was two, mm. and the, yeah, that for me, that's so feminine. <laughs> she'll always be. I feminine. never wore a tutu in my life. <laughs> I wouldn't wear it now. But I you said something very now. interesting. You're like when you talk about more when you say feminine or masculine. My entire life, people have always told me you're 
masculine but mm. not my looks because if you see me and when i go no, out i know masculine not at all mm. but like my personality mm. so it's funny that you say that because my entire life the people always tell me your your personality is, is a guy is a guy you're a man yeah that's the, the question is, yeah is it is it um uh, uh absolute direct opposing force if somebody is not feminine does that make make them automatically masculine no Exactly. No, it doesn't no. have to be black no, or no. white, just it like that. Be black. Just Definitely. because I'm maybe not the typical personality of, I wouldn't even say typical because mm-hmm. each personality is different, yeah. but like... Like a default. Yeah, the most common personality, I'm completely like out of it, that means I'm masculine. I was a tomboy in, uh, in back in school. I'm coming <laughs> to you now, yeah, about this. <laughs> so... You, you skipped it. So yeah, this is my this is my actually question to you now, Nadine. It's more specific to you. So a few things that come to mind that build part of your character. Mother of men has what people would categorize a, a boy's haircut. Designs jewelry for men, so very much in ten, uh, in touch with the masculine side. Do you find that challenging? Uh, that people will say, "Why why are you?" You know, trying to be a man. Why yeah. do you dress like a man? Why do you cut your hair like a man? Do you say that? Me? I mean, not you, Personally? but is that an Arab thing? No, but For sure she'll get it. I mean, for in, sure. culture, in certain cultures, you yeah. will have these stereotypes. Yeah, and yeah. Arab, Arab society is for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. if, if, if I take... Have that to you? So, yeah, I mean, they would say, why do you have such a short hair? You look like a man. But not meaning probably that they're offending me. Yeah. But uh, Arab it's uh, just out of... Yeah. It's not saying they're common. <laughs> You know, it takes a certain uh, courage uh, to to do something like that in Arab culture because Arab culture they'll associate long hair with a woman. Fe- with Suddenly, feminine. you shave it and you use uh, clippers to do this. They they don't get, it, especially the older generation. The older you, you say that my mom, for example, uh, bleaches her hair every month the color blue, green, uh, wow. Wow. yeah, red, uh, purple, pink. Like mm. she knows every month, every month a new color and. Even when we go back to Tunis, like young boys on the street would be like, look, look, she's look at her, like she's crazy. Like, what does she have with pink hair? What does she have with blue hair? And because you're not And you shout at them. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I don't you'd be surprised. I actually don't shout. I don't shout. I'm very my words are Pick so brutal. Words. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's stuck there. So tell me Nadia. Slightly intimidating. Yeah. How do you face these things, especially if somebody's trying? Or throwing words that attack your femininity? First, I don't care because I've been doing that for a long time. And Mm. uh, I have quite strong character when it comes to that. Um, As I said, like um, I used to be more like a tomboy when I was younger back in uh, back in school. Uh, I've always worn like uh, army uh, jackets with uh, shorts, short hair, a beret like tennis shoes, Stan Smith, and, uh, and I was like, I used to be on the basketball team. Obviously, you needed to be like quite strong physically and mm-hmm. all of that. So I was a lot into sports. Um, but that does not bother me, to be honest with you, because at the end of the day, if you are happy with who you are and what you represent and all of that, you should not, you should not care what people say. It's very but it's, simple. It's easy, Nadine, to... It's easy to say, yeah. yeah. Like also something that Caroline mentioned earlier, you know, sometimes it takes us years of building the self-esteem that is quite strong enough that not flimsy that every person's comment just throws you and then you have to come True, back to track. The self-esteem does not actually get me on that level. It gets me when it comes to my work, to my mm. creativity. Mm. This is where my self-esteem or like I would think twice or make sure that if I'm preparing something in exhibition in photography that it's perfect as much as I can do it. Yeah, and we perfect, cannot be perfect. Without, without yeah. judging myself. Yeah. Mm. This is where the self-esteem, it doesn't come because I'm wearing pants and I like tennis shoes. So how, how did you reach this uh, uh, level of so confident in your look that is it because you started very early? You said I was always a tomboy? Maybe, I would say, and I have a lot of like men's, uh, like my friends are all men, most mm. of them. I have more than friends, <laughs> but uh, I have a lot of men friends. Mm. Um, and I feel comfortable with them. Okay. I don't know if well, this, they're not I don't mean. Know. Same, yeah. 
Sorry? They're not mean. <laughs> Men <laughs> friends are that, not. Yeah, we're uh, yeah. not as I, mean. No, no, exactly. As, I totally as, uh, agree. I totally yeah. agree. Because men I think we're simpler. It's easier. Yeah. No, because yeah. you don't, I mean, men to women, if they are your friends, they will come into your world with a limit. Women cannot come into women's world That's without so removing all these boundaries or these limits. Ah, so you like, you like boundaries? I mean, yeah, because if I'm sitting with you today and you know, you would ask me anything, if I don't want to tell you, or if you ask me and if I don't say anything, you're not going to push more to mm. know. But if I'm sitting with a girlfriend, she's going to ask me. And if I say one word, she's going to keep on asking me. And if I say one more word, and, and then she wants to get everything out of you. Mm. Yeah. And it's just curiosity. And it's something I don't like in women. This is why my best friend is a, is a guy. <laughs> yeah, men are so much easier and yeah. they don't hold grudges. Yeah. yeah, we We're going to be shifting uh, the Caroline. Yeah, that <laughs> that so, <laughs> yeah, Caroline, I, I did a bit of uh, homework. Oh. So little. I don't like to be swayed. Um, so no, I know that you celebrated your your gray hair at a later age when everybody probably, whether in this country or other countries, would tell you, no, you should color it. It would make you look younger. Still do. Yeah. So I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, so, But you celebrated it late. Uh, I know that or I read that you don't like makeup much, right? It's not your thing. And your mother, your mother also apparently doesn't wear makeup. makeup, But your grandmother is very big on makeup. You did do some research. A bit, yeah. I'm impressed. Yes, my grandmother wouldn't leave the house without her face on. Mm -hmm. Yes. I remember as a child. Very interesting term. She'd be in the bathroom and I'd say, come on, Granny, because we used to go shopping quite a lot together. And she'd say, darling, I'm just putting my face on. Yeah. My face on So all of that, is it easy? Is it easy for you to say, I don't want to wear makeup just because you already have a beautiful face? I mean, if you were not so uh, naturally beautiful, would it be more difficult and you'll feel pressured? No, I need to put my face on like your grandmother would, would say? Or I can't answer that question. It's a tricky one. It is tricky, but I, but I think skin is a number one. If your skin is good, and if you are happy inside, mm-hmm. I think you can beam, you can, you can send out the best vibes, it doesn't matter. Mm. So you can possibly not be very attractive, but if you are happy, your eyes will shine. Mm. And, and I think, so it doesn't matter so much if you have good skin and you have bright, shiny eyes, I think you can conquer you just, the world. It just reminded me of a story that I experienced. So we were going to this event and the guys were in the mood, of course, to, to flirt or to find, you know, a cute girl. And um, I remember going in and then there's a lot of beautiful people, men and women. And the guys were like, okay, which, which girl is the most uh, good looking one? And the funny thing, and what you just said now, is the most attractive woman was not the prettiest. She was that just so into her own zone and happy. Mm. And smiling, which I think mm. is a big thing. It's mm. a big thing, true. And all the guys were Attracted aiming, her. and there were really yeah. more beautiful yeah. women. Because she had no, that aura, she had the aura. around her. Yeah. So what you just exactly. said really made a lot of sense also. Yeah. Hmm. Also the confidence and how do you, like, if you're in peace with yourself, if you accept your body, if you accept how you look, if you accept everything, there's a lot of criteria that come for you, for a woman to go out without, without makeup. Because, for example, in my uni, I'm prob- there probably like just two percent of girls don't wear makeup in mm. uni, mm. and a class at eight a.m. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. A class mm. of eight a.m. You'd smell the strong perfumes, the designer bags, the full face of makeup, the perfect outfits. Ninety-nine percent of the class is like that. So I think. Do you think? Do you think that'll ever change? No, not in the Arab world. Not anytime soon, anyways. But like I personally go in sweatpants and no makeup. But yeah, but that's what you're also trying to do. It's kind of your mission also to break the stereotype or the, the image of what but a part b- of, beauty means. Yeah, but a part of my career, like in uni, I'm a many, I'm a student. I'm not anything of career. And so even my day-to-day life, I never wear makeup. Mm. Never. You would, if you bump into me like in the mall, like during the week or something, I'm never with makeup. You'll never see me with makeup. Mm. Like I'm always just moisturizing sunscreen. Like that's my go-to because I'm in peace with my skin. I have pimples, I have acne scars, but I'm in peace with them. I'm 21. If I don't have pimples and acne now, I'd be like, okay, something is wrong with my body. So you can do something about it. 
I, I am though. <laughs> I am. Just Car- saying. Caroline, how did it take you, uh, your journey so far, to be so comfortable? Because seemingly you're very comfortable with your look, with your skin, with your hair. Um, in a nutshell, how would you reach that? If a, if a girl is watching this and she says, I'm, I'm really not at peace. Now, I, I actually heard a girl who had one strand of gray hair and she was really bothered with it. And I'm like, no, keep it. It's cool. It's, cool. It is cool. it's unique. Yeah. But then the whole world is peer pressuring. You should go color it or yeah. match it. I think I've always quite liked being individual and it might be a bit of a shock when I go back to England because I'm going to be like every other English person of my age because they're all grey. But here I'm very individual and I, and I love that. I, I, like, um, I like the attention. I like um, this person I have created and that I am creating. Um, I'm at, I am at becoming at peace with myself. Why did it come late? Because like you said, I was a mother, I was a daughter, I was busy looking after everybody else. And it's only when you have time to stop and think about you that True. That you can hmm. do what you want to do. Do what you want to do whenever <laughs> you want to do it. It's a new freedom. It is, absolutely. So we can go to the cinema at ten o'clock on Friday morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> True. Uh, Amani. Little things please little minds. <laughs> True. I agree. Uh, Amani, uh, you mentioned that you're the first uh, curvy model, and I know that you don't like the word curvy. You like, you, you don't like to say that it has to be categorized. Why, why isn't beauty maybe varied, right? Yeah. Rather than only have to be stick bones and tall and whatnot, just to be categorized under you know a model or. So I know that you are regarded as the first curvy model, but I know that you want that word, you said it somewhere, that you want that word gone. You want yeah. it to be model. I want to be, in the, yeah, I said that in the interview. Okay. The <laughs> um, also, from the gist of reading what you're about and how you answer questions, you are not thinking only of Amani, but you kind of are encouraging women just to celebrate who they are. Yeah. Like, you know, I was gonna swear, but I have so many <laughs> ladies here. I'm trying to be. Uh, oh no! Swear? Me, no, by no, the God. way, yeah, well, so do like it. A truth? I have green lights. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It is. It, if so, you have, you have green lights. Okay, so yeah, I swear a lot. So I'll just swear. <laughs> swear My point is, you say fuck the system, fuck yeah. the idea of beauty. Yeah. Uh, I need to break all of this, yeah. and then we fix it all together in a much exactly. healthier way. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is, you, the energy that I got reading it was you have a drive to make women celebrate whatever they are exactly it's okay like you want to tell them Haribti, it's okay exactly. come I'll, I'll i'll brush your hair i'll tell you it's fine you're okay you don't need to feel less yeah and you come from a generation younger than all of us which is an extremely important generation yeah. you deal with your sons you deal with your daughter and son and this generation is extremely social media driven extremely programmed to to identify what is beautiful what is ugly okay. and everybody's so insecure and you yeah. mentioned that you don't like photoshop and people should let, use it less so what i'm coming to is why is it so important does it make you feel better when then you that you're encouraging all these other women and where is it stemming from is it anger are you angry at the system probably yeah because i could feel that yeah i really pissed off probably yeah but like like it comes from like different things like for example, I grew up in the French school. Like in the French school, girls there didn't really care, for example, little things like looking on point every day. Because the French mentality, we don't care about these things. But then when I started going to uni and I went to an Arab uni here, and then I realized that it's completely different. Like if you're not 100% like on point, you know, people would look at you like, Falaha, mm. where are you from? And I feel like, I'm, it took me so much time for me to be comfortable in my own skin and for me to accept how I am because I look completely different from the girls that I grew up with. Probably one or two are like me and the, the rest, all like the skinny, tall girl or small girl. And uh, 
I think it just took me, the, when I realized the feeling of accepting yourself and how good it feels to be comfortable with yourself, to be like, until today, I get people telling me, I mean, you have to lose weight. I get attacked on social media all the time that what I'm doing is completely wrong. I get messages, paragraphs from doctors begging me to stop doing what I'm doing because I'm promoting obesity and saying once and once a doctor told me, mm. like we already have to deal with a lot of obesity. Mm. So a lot of little things. And I think I want to share the feeling that I have with everyone. I want everyone to have this feeling that I have inside of me when someone tells me you have to lose weight, it literally comes from here, goes out from here. Like it really, really does not affect me. And the fact that I reached to a point of being so careless of what people tell me, because I'm so, I listen to everyone. But when it comes to me and myself, I don't need anyone's opinion. Hmm. I, I don't accept anyone's opinion. You wanna, you wanna say it to me, say it, but it, it's not gonna affect me. So if your best friend tells you something, it wouldn't matter about you? <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> um, it's okay, you can say me, no, it won't. No, look, me and my best friend, it's uh, Naharam, he actually worries a lot and he like always says what he has to say when, it's, when he feels like I'm doing something wrong. I'm very stubborn, hmm. so it always ends up in a fight, but... <laughs> Mm. It always ends up in a fight. Even I'm wrong or even he's wrong. So for me to really understand something like a one, two, three, maybe on the third fight, I'd be like, okay, fine, you're right. Maybe that's wrong. But I'd only listen to like two or three people in my life, not more. Yeah. Maybe more than enough. Because, yeah, because I always think not everyone's attentions when they give you advice is actually pure. I really believe in that. So what, what drives you? Just being angry at the system? Uh, is it because... I don't think you you were bullied, right, in school or... Look, I wouldn't say bullied because now that I've met people who actually properly got bullied, I don't consider myself getting bullied, but I, I got called names that were misplaced hmm. from the people that I love. So the thing is, that's why I always say, wait your words before saying it. My best friends called me names that really affected me when I was young, but... Such as, if I can ask? Like, yeah, like, like whale many was my nickname, one of my nicknames in high school because I many, it removed the eights many, so that was my nickname, many. So some people would call me many legend and some people would call me whale many. Wow. Like, so it, it came from two different things. Like that wouldn't, f it affected me at that age when, the, when you have a whole high school calling you whale many or like making jokes of like, go back to the sea or like, for example, we'd be in a pool party and everyone would jump in the water and be like, oh, many, you know, be careful, so not me. Like little jokes like that. Mm. And when, if I'm, you say that to a 13 year old girl, 15, 16, of course it's gonna affect her. Of course, her. yeah. So now at 21, no, it's like I couldn't care less, I'd laugh with you. But. But it doesn't make it okay, I, even if. It the, doesn't make it okay. So, but the problem that those words came out of people that I know they actually love me. Hmm. So they don't realize the effect. So imagine someone who actually hates you and says that to you. It's, it's different. So I, yeah. I didn't get bullied, but I got called names that I. Which I didn't. And how will you deal with the anger? Are you using it in a positive way or it's st still you're struggling with it? This year I calmed down a lot compared to... You approve? Well, I don't know what she's looking at. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I calmed down a lot this year. I was very um, aggressive in the way I speak, mm. which I've always been told is not feminine because... I have to calm down when I talk. And sometimes I say stuff that can hurt someone so badly that when I calm down, I regret it sometimes. Mm. And I, I think I calm down, I think I change. I look into the positive perspective. I always think in every negative thing, there is a positive thing, always. So when I get bullied or get attacked or get called names, I always tell myself, Amani, that person said you support obesity, for example, but maybe he's insecure. Maybe he's, he, he didn't, he's not confident. Ah. Maybe he didn't accept himself. Or if a girl tells me you're fat, you're ugly. I'm like, maybe she doesn't find herself pretty. Hmm? Maybe she, she's not able to even look at herself in the mirror. And I can say three hours talking to myself in the mirror. Like, you see, it's, it's <laughs> true, but it's small little things. So hmm. I always tell myself, I hate push motivates me more, actually, if anything. Because I get those hate and I'm like, okay, I still need to fix people. 
I still need to change mentalities. I mm. still have to do so much. Of course, there's also a minority of hate that I get that just because people are mean and like they want to so, hate. So. But the majority is actually girls who I know are insecure and feel would feel good about themselves by hating. It's a very, very good point. Yeah, so, and it's always girls. It's, it's always, a, it, girls. It's I, always it, girls. It always It hurts me actually yeah. if people say things to me. I, I try really hard not to think about it, but I have to talk to my husband who, who puts it. He is totally grounds me and mm. puts it in perspective. But it it does upset me, and I just think it's so sad that yeah. women are so mean. Actually, there's mm. something I did recently. I don't know if you guys saw on social media, but I did a post with um, another. Uh, body positivity advocate, but she's blonde with blue eyes, she's skinny and she has abs, and she's taller than me. And then there's me, the curly hair girl with the, like curvy mm. and brown eyes. So we posted a picture, the picture got uh, caught by a lot of uh, big pages on Instagram with millions of followers. So the pages went from a page to a page to a page. And when I saw all the pages and all the tags, all the comments, 99% of the hate was directly to me. She got no hate whatsoever in mm. all the pages. Mm. Probably she got two or three hates where it was like, "Oh, you're not beautiful. Um, I, what are you doing?" Like, but me, it was intense hate. You're a pig. You're a cow. Wow. Jeez. You're this. And I did a I did a post about it where I I reposted the picture and I screenshotted the nice hate comments, not the intense ones, and I put them. And then the I put, nice hate ones. Yeah, the nice hate ones. Mm. And then I put the two hate, the only two hate comments she got next to it. And I just posted it and I was like, guys, look, just compare. Just look. It's, it's a topic that you, you made me think of now while I'm listening to you. And I'd love to know Nadine and Caroline also your perspective because uh, the three of us, we come from a time with no social media. So my childhood didn't consist of social media till later in my years. So I got to experience... Um, dealing with kids and teenagers and, and having fun without the internet. Um, now... Good days. It's very different, <laughs> yeah. So now, there is a... I say in Arabic, it's two sides. Yeah. Social media and internet is a weapon with the two, two, like two sides. Double Either you use sword. double-edged sword. Mm. So you can use it for good, you can use it for bad. Mm. But what do you, you're both mothers, and you're both on social media, so not one of the ones that say, no, I'm against it or I don't know how to use it. How do you see it? Do you see a person like Amani or your kids or a friend or anybody, they're going, how do you per- perceive and look at the idea of beauty and femininity and what these girls are going through at a very young age, defining what beauty and femininity is? What's your opinion on that? For, for me, uh, and it's going against the femininity thing, is that I do believe people have to toughen up. I'm not, a, I'm not for this, oh, let's be really kind to everybody and everybody's totally perfect. Agree. No, not everybody's perfect. In fact, no one's perfect. But I do believe that we have to be kind. But I wouldn't be sitting here if I, if I didn't, A, start modelling at 53 and because of Instagram. So I have a lot to be grateful for, for social media. Uh, and I get very little hate, maybe one a month. Hmm. Um, so I'm incredibly lucky. But I'm advocating also, uh, advocating that you can be your best self in your 50s. You can be better than you have ever been in your 50s. Mm. So it's exciting to be halfway through your life and to create this person and be happy. So that's, that's what Nadine. I'm advocating. I mean, social media is a, is a beast. And as you said, it, it has these two edges. And it could be good, obviously, for the business, for like reaching a wider audience. Uh, being a voice to, a many pe- to many people who had no voice previously. But again, the kindness is major, major, major. And this is what people talk about, but don't actually do. Mm. People say we're okay with a curvy uh, person. We're okay with people with white hair. We're okay with, a, with somebody with a short hair. But are they really being truthful? And this is what actually annoys the hell out of me when I see things on Instagram and when I... This is why I try on my Instagram not to go overboard. Whether it's 
where I'm going out or what I'm eating or who I'm <laughs> with or who I mean every for me everything that you do in excess is not a good thing mm. so people posting too much of their themselves or their selfies obviously I have to rephrase because if you look at my Instagram years back you would see more um, mountains more gatherings uh, more specific things I'm talking about my person and with the recent year or so you could tell that I'm more visible as Nadine on my Instagram because this is what people want to see hmm. people want to see want to know you correct yeah mm. I don't think they want to know me oh I think people are in their um, humans are curious yeah right. they want to see what the other people is doing for the sheer of whether it's a nice thing a bad thing a it's good human thing. to human it's human that's to why the human. biggest shows in the world are human based right yeah, yeah. whether yeah, it's Ellen or Oprah or uh, Steve Harvey it's yeah, a people, human being but we all have our own tribe and and True. I try and stay away from the people on Instagram who I I don't necessarily agree with them so therefore I don't want to see their stuff because if you haven't got anything nice to say don't say anything at absolutely all. so if you don't see it then it's better for you it's people better love for you. drama they love drama. They love knowing. They love the. I think the younger people like drama. My generation. We don't need they drama. Love drama. Yeah, we don't. Need <laughs> they know. Yeah, I, I seek peace of mind in everything I do. No, but my generation, for example, they live like they would, like now the, after what Nadine said, like when I'm sitting at gatherings, they'd be like, for example, if you see the influencers they follow, it's the influencers that talk about their drama all the time, and I and then they see them in the mall, they don't even care about them. But it's like I always ask them, like, why do you follow them if you don't care? They're like, oh, they're entertaining. Yeah, yeah, you're world. right. It's there inter- is entertainment. It's the, but it's, it's a sad entertainment. So that's yeah. like somebody like just looking at like Kardashians. Lives yeah, to be entertained. So it's curiosity. It's I think but my main, my, my main question. Uh, sorry, Nadine. My main question to you and uh, Caroline was more: Do you believe it's so dangerous? It is. The social media, how it's programming women to feel about themselves. Is it misleading? Is it actually accurate? Is it good that they're benchmarking themselves? It's not going to go away. No. So, no. so I think we need to learn how to use it. So how would you advise somebody? By being authentic. You have yeah. authenticity. You obviously do. I believe I'm pretty authentic. authentic. Yes. Uh, and, and so I think if we can try to follow the authentic people and to be authentic ourselves and ditch the... Yeah, you have, you, <laughs> you have, to, educate, the other you have to educate your, your kids. You have yes, to your be on children. Top of, you exactly. Have to Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this generation goes by the how many likes they have. And this is very much of a self-esteem thing. I know from a younger generation, kids like my friend's kids, and uh, she would go to her mom and say, Mom, I didn't get enough uh, likes on, and, and it's drama at the wow. home. At home. She yeah. goes like, why do you care if your friends, your hundred friends, did not all, you know, but maybe they're busy. Maybe what, whatever. Exactly. Why is it so important? important? It is and, kind of important. Because me. you look cooler. <laughs> it is kind yeah, of but important. Yeah. When you go out in the real world, what will that <laughs> do to you? translate to what? If yeah. you're going in, into a job and your boss is not going to just like, yeah, I like, no, you have to prove yourself. You have to work hard. You it's have very to. addictive, Nadine. It's very yeah, addictive. The dopamine yeah. hit that these kids get to feel valuable. For example, I but saw. But it, it's it, sad. It's very sad. It's very I saw sad. a video, uh, a nice video by Gary Vee yesterday, I, th- I think it was. And the kid comes up to him and he's like, I really look up to you. A really young generation. And Gary Vee is more my generation. And he comes and he's like, love your content. And, uh, you know, I, I dream of hitting my goal. And he's like, what is your goal? He's, on, he's like, I want to be a YouTuber. He's like, good for you. And he goes, you know, what advice would you give me? So I love that this kid is asking Gary Vee yeah. what advice. And he said, don't do it for the likes. Do it because it's the content passion. that's of, very authentic to you. Yeah. And those things will come. Of, of course, because it has become a business now as well. YouTubing and Absolutely, all of that. Yeah. So as designer, as a designer, I would work hard to actually work on my product, get successful, have a good business model, and so on. So, so I work hard. But for this generation, is actually the likes. But obviously, you need to love it to keep on doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I do things from, because from, I love to do them. From our point of view, presumably, we are our business. Yeah, like I am my business. So it is slightly different. 
Yeah, yeah. when you're a person, business is different, yeah. easier yeah. than a product, for yeah. sure. But like, I want to say something to your question is how <laughs> Answer the question. Tell <laughs> Tell me. No, it's that. Um, it's because my followers once asked me, they were like, how, how do you recommend us to like stay away from social media? But at the same time, I want to be on social media, but it's destroying me. And I always tell them, only follow the accounts that matter. Don't unfollow all the accounts that make you feel bad. I did that. I even followed a lot of people that when I look at their pictures, I see all the Photoshop, I see all the Facetune, and I see how they look in their life. It's a catfish. Hmm. So for me, unfollow. They look like a catfish. Yeah. It it's it's why am it's I okay, talking but then about? They message you and they say, "Why did you unfollow me?" And I, I feel know. so sorry. I did a mistake. I, I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm, I'm used to that. I keep. <laughs> thank God I don't have that drama. I think. Look, <laughs> it, we're, we're giving social media too much face. So if somebody unfollows you, like if I don't follow somebody, it doesn't mean I'm not gonna be nice the next time I see them in the mall. But they it's take it like he's my enemy now. Yeah. Like no. no, I'm just yeah. I do what uh, she said. Every period, I'm like, Anas, what content are you seeing? Yeah. Is it the content you want to interact with? Are you liking your friends and your family and commenting or not? And I don't want to just do this all the time. Yeah. Why I'm bringing money the beauty uh, point a lot. I don't want people to, to feel I'm veering off femininity. But it seems beauty is so intera- uh, in, in touch or entangled, super glued <laughs> to femininity. Where a girl who doesn't look pretty or is not skinny is feeling less feminine. Yeah. And that's why I find it very dangerous. Same goes, of course, on the male side, but that's a completely different topic. Stereotypes. But all these photoshops makes uh, the curvy girl sitting at home thinking, I'm not a, a proper female, I'm not yeah. feminine. So that's why. Um, but I'll come to a, a question before I have some quotes that I wrote that I thought were pretty cool. They reminded me of you. Um, so the, the question is, so would you say that a... A woman who is a tomboy, or a woman who doesn't even like children and doesn't want to, or doesn't want to get married, or doesn't is not motherly, right? Or or any any of those categories that let's say are not the typical, or which the word we use is default. Would you say they're not considered feminine? Not at all. No, I have lots of girlfriends yeah. who don't want babies. And I that's... don't want babies. But that's what parents make you feel. If you don't want kids, they're like, they'll make you feel less of a woman. That's so true. Every time I tell my mom and my parents, I'm like, I don't want kids. They always blame it on my age. We're like, you're still small. We'll talk again when you're 30. Exactly. Every time I tell my mom, I don't want to get married. I don't personally believe in love. So I don't want... Oh, that's another 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 topic. No, but like, no, I'm not getting... (laughs) (laughs) But a lot of my generation actually don't. Um, I don't want kids. I don't. I don't want. I don't believe in love or anything. So, but two I'm different just, things. Yeah, kids can also come out of unfortunately marriages that have no love. Yeah. yeah that's so, so I. That's another subject. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Every I time married. I say that to my parents, they, it's always like, "Talk to me when you're 35. Let's talk again when you're you sure. 30. Say yeah, okay. Are we'll you the only daughter? Uh, yeah, I have a small brother, but yeah, the only daughter. So, so they do make you f- the the comments that come to you if you don't feel like you want to have four kids or you love children or you're good with children that you're less a woman oh i'm not looking yeah. for a man oh why they'll look at you awkward my dad treats me like a guy like literally <laughs> no no seriously like my dad in his head i'm i'm the guy of the family and my brother is the cute little pie mm. because i'm the one who took everything on my head i'm the one who's like stood up i'm the like rijal like it's me so i'm the one who took everything on my shoulders so it's like, خلاص, they're not worried about me. My dad, last time he said it, he's like, she doesn't need a man, she's, she's a man herself. Ooh. I get that these from, are tricky, yeah, tricky I get statements. that from my dad all the time. Or sometimes wow. he tells me, I've never seen you in a dress. I've never seen you, you in see? a skirt. That's another yeah, point. I've seen you in a skirt. Yeah, I've seen you. Yeah. But you know, dress sense. Yeah. Why if don't you ever wear makeup? Uh, that, we talked about pink for men. And then when I brought up the topic and I said, by the way, in history, Pink was a male color. Yeah, true. Yeah. Barbie, when it was introduced, it switched it up, and we associated the pink so color. It's Barbie's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Barbie and then us. And then Barbie us. Barbie ruined a lot of things. <laughs> exactly. Barbie ruined a lot but of things. But you see what I mean? My son wore pink shirts when he was little. Two, but three, you have you have Ralph that Lauren. you have that uh, sure. okayness. In, You're in okay the, with yeah, that. In the West, yeah. yeah. In, in Other the families here, no way. I mean, no way. We got way. to be a real man to wear pink. Exactly. 
That's what I would support. Yeah. It doesn't, no, my yeah. point is, it doesn't matter if you wear yellow, yeah. blue, whatever you want. That if, does not if, the, if your daughter yeah, says, I want change. to have a, a blue birthday party, I want blue colors everywhere. <laughs> it should be, why, why should we like, la, it's not girly. What is pink. girly? Yeah. What is girly? What yeah, is because feminine? Because these are stereotypes. It's stereotypes. Well, when, you, when, when you're young, you start like, okay, this is what you like, this is what you don't like. You have to behave this way. This way makes you more feminine. This way makes yeah. you more of a woman. You, you, you know, unfortunately, yeah. less and be, less now. I would have been disappointed if Mimi didn't wear a tutu when she was two. <laughs> you would? I would have been disappointed, mm. yeah. Because I had a boy first. Both of them are IVF. So I didn't know if I would even have a second child. And luckily, uh, you wanted time, a girly girl. Worked. And I wanted to go shopping with a girl. There's yeah. nothing quite like going shopping with a girl. Presumably, you will have that experience with your daughters. No, I have daughters. that with my, yeah, she has two my, sons. my two. I have two boys. Yeah. Do they like shopping? No, the younger one does. Okay. Yeah. My and I son go shopping hates. My them. husband hates shopping, and my and my son hates shopping. No. My husband and my eldest. They don't like shopping. So they can be in their shorts, go out, sleep in their shorts, <laughs> go out to a dinner in their shorts. They don't okay, care. Yeah. But the younger one is... So you, you, none of you would say any of the things I mentioned lessens uh, uh, no, the femininity not. of a woman. No. You know, it's funny that you say that because my mom, until today, she tells me I never had, she always even tells me I never had the raising up a girl experience with Amani. Mm. It, it's funny that you say that because mm. my mom literally always says that. She also tells me, friend, but I that's a character. But yeah. also, you have I wanted, a strong character. I wanted a little girl for, I bought, bought baby girl clothes at the age of 16. I had a bottom drawer and I bought clothes and I put them away until I had a girl. But Afina Amani, your point is why you have to, uh, I'm not saying, don't, of course, don't be angry or upset or disappointed, which is a very easy reaction to a mother saying, I wish I had a typical daughter, right? But we also, if we put ourselves in the shoes of your mother or many mothers, they built an image that is a very typical image, according to movies, according to stories, according Absolutely. to the neighbor's daughter, mm. of what they Absolutely. fantasize. It's a very yeah, selfish yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, it is, even, but it's even, okay it's a very to have her, for her to have that feeling. Correct. Yeah. No, it's and normal. it's okay for you to have that. Yeah, no, but, it's, it's, but I suffered from it as a young age. It's like little things. Like, for example, yeah. when I go to Tunis, and like, Anas and Nadine would know this, like, we go play, the boys play in the streets, you know, football, bicycle, and then they're like girls of the neighborhood. They all chill in one neighbor's house and just mm. talk and see. I was never with the girls. The boys. I was, and yeah. the neighbors would go to my mom and tell her, hey, go pick up your daughter from the streets. She's in the streets. <laughs> and my mom would be like, Khalia, I gave up with her, let her stay in the streets. You'd find me in mud, you'd find me playing uh, football, you'd find me, uh, I doing graffitis on the wall like I don't I did a lot of things like playing basketball but that's the beauty yeah you of would, life yeah you would never you know? and she I never that. owned the Barbie I never owned the Barbie did you have Ken <laughs> no no, no, no. <laughs> that was too girly for We're me gonna, we at the age of yeah. <laughs> at the age of 16 like for uh I was telling my dad now I I love shooting I tell my dad, take me I shooting. Love shooting. I love shooting. I'm like, take me. Caroline, if your daughter wasn't a girly girl, she's would you? a good shot. No. Actually, a good shot, and she's very good with balls. But would have I you been rubbish. disappointed I'm if so she wasn't? Girly that I can't catch a ball. Um, would I be disappointed if your girl didn't, wasn't a girly girl? Yes, I would. I like the honest answer. Yeah, and I think she would be disappointed if she if she didn't have a girly girl too. How? If because she was, she wants, if she, she wants, was born more, she loves our relationship. I love our relationship. We have a great. Uh, she'll be at Zara, and she will WhatsApp me photographs from the changing room of what she's trying on, and I'll do the same thing. No, uh, but I'm saying hypothetically, if your daughter was more tomboyish, tomboy. well, I'd have to accept it. But that's but the trick. Did your mom accept? Did your mom accept that? And it, you, when you talked about the relationship, it's true. I had. Uh, I had a lot of struggles with my mom till the age of 16. <laughs> but I think it's normal also. No, it's, it's, I don't think it was, yeah, but it was, for me it was more of she didn't accept. Mm. She didn't accept it. That's the issue. Right, so as a mother, yeah. we should have accepted, or if my daughter was a tomboy, then I should have as the correct thing to do, but I didn't. Mm. And, uh, or I, I wouldn't have because I, I had that fixed, as you say, that fixed thing in my head. The image. Caroline, I have a question for you. Can I ask her a question? Yeah, of course. Oh. 
Um, do you feel like your daughter was pressured more to be a more girly girl for Not at all. her relationship? Not at all. She dressed herself. Okay. Every morning. Good question. I, I wore <laughs> the most extraordinary things, and we went out with the wand shopping. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. She did. I didn't tell her to take the wand. Should no, I take out the quotes? Yeah. Please. Okay. Do you have a quote for each of us? I do, actually. Ah, interesting. So, okay. Let's um, see. because femininity is um, a vague word, uh, but I find that also beautiful because when it's vague, it's like art. Anybody can. Yeah, true can uh, have an interpretation. So I, I did uh, search images, and I saw, of course, all the quotes. Am I Venus? But no. <laughs> With a short hair. Yours, the... Okay, yeah, this is the one that reminded, <laughs> reminded you, you of you. You had a question mark in your eyes. No, no, I'm checking, because I have three. Okay. One, for, one reminded me of an aspect of each of you from the little that I know. So this one is by Susan San... I hope I say it right. San Santry? Oh. Something. My handwriting is not the best. Anyway. <laughs> what is the most beautiful and viral, virile, virile men? It's a new word I learned. So what is the most beautiful and virile men is something feminine. What is the most beautiful and feminine women is something masculine. I agree. You do? I do. I thought you would We relate. have to be balanced somehow. Yeah. You know, we have to have something from both sides of... Uh, Adam and Eve. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it reminded me. Okay. Not 50-50, but you have to have that kind of combination. It's a very interesting quote. I really liked it. Yeah. That's why I kept it, Yanni. Uh, Caroline, I read something by Reese Witherspoon. Oh, well, that's more my cup of tea, yeah. Okay. Oh, so I'm doing well. <laughs> she, she said, sexuality and femininity are an accumulation of age and wisdom and comfort in your own skin. I totally agree with that. Which I felt applied to your journey. Totally. Yeah. Cool. I would not have been in vogue naked age 30. Nice. I like that. Um, Amani, when she stopped conforming to the conventional picture of femininity, she finally began to enjoy being a woman by Betty Friedan. Cool. Yeah. You want me to say that again? You want me to read it again? Yeah, <laughs> really, yeah, like, I only need to read that again. When she stopped conforming to the conventional picture of femininity, she finally began to enjoy being a woman. Yeah, so meaning because you, you relate too much to certain things of what a woman should be. Yeah. The minute you stop following or running after that is when you are comfortable you and yeah. happy with what you, and who you are. Hmm. That's true, yeah. I thought these quotes he were... He did really well. Yeah, he did Thanks. his homework, huh? Yeah. yeah. By the way, I don't spend so much time, you'd be surprised. I just, I'd like to get a feeling about the person and then I want to listen to maybe whatever I prepared is, is bullshit and I don't need it. Maybe I need to just listen and, and see what you, what you think. What was so, your feeling for each one of us? And why did what you I, choose what us? I conveyed. Yeah. Um, My good question. Good yeah. question. There was except uh, the age group because we are in the same age group, mm, but very different at the same time. True. So uh, with Nikki, we we do so much. We spend a lot of time on the show, and it's always about bringing in uh, a balance of experience, of stories, of popularity. In some cases, how big they are on social media, but do they have a story or are they dumb? All of those. <laughs> like, I like that. Or you need depth. <laughs> so um, we think them. about a lot, of, and we think two men. Uh, one woman, two women, one man. What's the balance we're looking for? So with masculinity, we had two men, one Marathi, one, Marathi, one Syrian, and a Marathi woman. It was very interesting. Very. Dynamic, yeah. And because she's also a, a mother, we wanted also that aspect. You know, if you're going to bring up a, a son, how would you? So in this specific case, it was, I know I have to also mention availability. And you, in the oh, Corona yeah. time, I was very... Uh, stripped down to who's worthy and who's I want to listen to, who's actually going to come and who's here. So in your case, it was quite easy because I've had, you know, there, there are great women characters in Dubai. Great. Yeah. And for me, Very I'm like, I'm looking for, I love mm. meeting a woman who's comfortable in her skin, who has a personality, perspective, uh, story. So for, for me, this was quite easy, the balance. Uh, okay. She was the last edition because we needed that Edge. Young, edgy, different, <laughs> yeah. and we, I wanted somebody that when she comes, she will add this perspective that we 
even me, so I'm, I'm somewhere the in the middle. Yeah. But I want to know how they're going through. And she's very bold. Yani I look yeah. at some of her pictures. I'm sure some some person will say that bikini picture is vulgar. But you're trying to make you're trying to make a statement. Now no. whether I'm going to clap or not, agree or disagree, it's a statement. It takes so much to do something like that. Uh, so I'm curious, you know. That bikini picture caused a lot I'm sure. of problems. Just I'm because sure. I'm and I actually archived it because it caused so much. Yeah, you brought it back. Also. And then I thought of it literally 24 hours. I was like, many? Why did you? I was like, I you know what? I was like, I don't give a shit about anyone. I'm back. Mm. And I posted. So I, I was with him. She doesn't. She, maybe she'll archive it back. She she almost killed me. So no, I killed you. I mean, for me, it's not about what you show. Uh, okay, I need. I don't know if I want to. Yeah, yeah. For me, I'm. Oh, I've always been conservative in how I dress, like modest. Uh, although I don't come from a religious or modest uh, household, but for me, it was about the bikini, not about the body. So there's a bit of a difference. Mm. You will rarely see me in a bikini on, on the beach. I mean, if somebody posts a picture of me, I'm always like, please ask me first. And it's not because of, I don't want to show my body, but it's, I think sometimes, maybe because I come from that generation where you need to keep something for yourself, something that not everybody needs to see and, 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 and know and have a look at. Mm. It's yeah. just from that perspective. Me it was when I posted that picture in my head it was really a statement of like I'm sick of the Arab double life. Like if that was that was that was the what was in my head when everyone was telling me I'm any deleted did it. I the day I, the second I posted the, my phone, what about them? Yeah you're stubborn. Calls. I'm yeah. And the more people will tell you to I'm like, Walla, yalla. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, call me till tomorrow. I'm not gonna, because then they were like, and you know what people told me? I'm gonna do a private Instagram and post whatever you want in it. I'm like, ah, so I did. If I have a in- private Instagram, mm. I can the post it. Standard. That's a double standard. I know I, would, I don't I have double standards. I know I don't have double standards. Uh, mm. And at one, you'll see me clubbing, you'll see me in Mykonos, you'll see me, I have nothing to hide. Yeah. My dad knows, my mom knows. Blessing. There are people also who would say that I shouldn't do a bikini because of my age. Yeah. So I'm also fighting. Yeah. A different, a different force. Yeah. 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 It's not the age. It's the because I'm Arab yeah. and because I'm Muslim. Yeah. So that was like. So did that answer your question? Um, um, of what? What was why <laughs> why I why chose, chose the group? Ah, why yeah, okay, yeah. I thought yeah. You know, I find that it's so Definitely. interesting. The mothers of sons are so different. Yeah, my mother is they, a mother of sons. I know yeah. she's formidable. Yeah, and she'll say like I'm a mother of men. That's it. I don't know. She doesn't know how to. No. Before no. having my kids, I said I hope I will be a mother of sons. I didn't want to. Even the no, dogs no in her house are, are girls. boys. Hat the dogs. Our dogs are all girls. So, uh. It's. I don't think it's easy to raise a woman, especially it's like. It's scary. I feel, I, I feel like when I look at my mom today and I talk to her because like today my mom's my best friend and she tells me she's like you're not easy. She's like I gave up a long time. She knows she says it. Yeah. And it's funny because like I feel like I put so much on my mom that I divided in. For me, it's like I have. It's like I have two moms in my head. Like Nadine. And my mom, like mm. in my head, those are my mom. So sometimes my mom can't because I'm too strong and my mom's not that strong. I, I go to Nadine. Nadine, I did this, 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 this. Whatever oh works God, for you. And so sometimes we like, need to choose people like it's that not, in our life. And I feel like it's really not easy. This is why I always say she's my second mother because I feel like I'm half raised by her and half raised by her. So it's like, it, it's not easy. And she but tells it's me, women supporting women at the yeah. end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. And so your mum is there. You will always know that your mum is there. Mm. Yeah. That you have support from, from another, from a second Also mother. in the industry, she was my entrance to the industry. She was my right hand in the industry. She was everything. Like, I don't think if I had Nadine, I would be in the industry. Honestly. No, I wouldn't say that. But, but like you were... The of push. course, I'll be supported. Yeah. I'll be, uh, so tell me, ladies. Um... Inshallah, a lot of women will be watching this. Even men. Men need to be educated also on the idea of femininity, on the idea of celebrating women in whatever way, style a woman is. Uh, what are final words, if any, that you would like to address? Maybe I didn't ask the question that you wanted to address something. I would say we need to judge less yeah. as humans and accept people the way they are. And as uh, she said, we need to be kind and human. This is what I, what I, I find the worlds now that are yeah. shifting. 
and with COVID even more so. Mm. so Never we need to be COVID. definitely, definitely more human. Yeah. Caroline. Yeah, and if you're going to be mean, be mean at home. <laughs> Don't yeah. be spreading in that shit Absolutely. around. Yeah, because we don't true. need that. Yes, she's for. <laughs> okay. Honesty is good, but I feel like honesty has to be with limits because sometimes you hurt someone so much with your honesty, but you don't realize it. Which I have. There to is an me. art. There is an yeah. art for honesty. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely. I think being too. Authenticity and honesty. Yeah. Yes. Maybe it's yeah. different. Honestly. You can say so yeah. many things that are still honest, but in a in a softer way. Yeah, and then elegant way. Anything. Uh, you see? Uh, <laughs> good way to end. <laughs> Caroline, any, anything you would like to add? Um, the same thing. I, I would like people to be kinder, but I think it is such a big ask. Um, I can't see it happening in my lifetime. To, for people to be kinder? No. You think people are m- mainly mean? No, not mainly mean, but mean, but there will always be mean people it's normal, out there. I think. It's normal. Yeah. yeah. And but on the other hand, I don't I don't want to be told I can't use certain words. That's my big thing at the moment. Don't tell me I can't say this and I can't say to that be as a word. Correct. Oh, yeah. That drives me insane. I have mm. to agree. Being politically correct. If somebody's overweight, you can say that uh, you know without being offensive, but that's you're underweight, yeah, you're overweight, you've got black, you are black, you're white, you are all of those things. Yeah. Labels, uh, but it's uh, they are labels. But if you're black, I now can't. I now don't, don't know how to talk to you yeah. without worrying that I'm going to. Oh, that's, you can, uh, there's yeah, yeah. a beauty. Like I could say, that's a beautiful black person. That's a beautiful white person. That's exactly. a beautiful Arab a beautiful person brown person. Blue coat. It's the same. But it's become it's become yeah. very eggshells. So it's like anything yeah. you say. Oh, sorry, I might defend you. I'm scared to my opinion. I might cause. Something I don't want and to that is not only by color. Yeah. It's become about weight. It's become it's about religion. Anything, you anything, mean, anything. Everything became so sensitive. Yeah. But for me, I I'd say like for the younger generation is we seek approval a lot hmm. from people, and I really realized that whether it's in high school or in uni, the like or, system. Oh yeah, well, one of them like it can be a stupid thing like even being invited to parties. By the way, so I'm just likes like. It can be really dumb things that now when I, like I work with older people, I realize are really dumb, and so well, all m- people are dumb. Who are dumb? No, <laughs> no. Dumb? no. As, as, you're dumb. No, <laughs> your friends are dumb. <laughs> Sorry, well, you're gonna hold her on every word. That's my old dialect. Like. <laughs> no, like little things, like for example, not getting invited to a party or not right. getting invited. It shouldn't like, be a big deal. It shouldn't be a right. big deal. So that's dumb. Yeah, that's oh, dumb. Okay. People who, who get offended. Yeah. yeah, she caught you like she caught me contradicting myself. Yeah, yeah. With the, the <laughs> light English, before the show. What can I say? <laughs> okay, so yeah, you want to tell them that these things are petty. They it won't matter another day. You laugh at yourself when you're 25, 26 about you like being pissed off about something like that when you were 18 or 17. And also, uh, judgments completely agreed. I always say you do a good thing, you'll get judged. You do a bad thing, you'll get judged. So just yeah. do it. Because live your both, life. Exactly. Yeah. Both ways you're getting judged. As long as you're not yeah. going to hurt people, yeah. live your life the way you want to live it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I always say being different, I feel like people in the Arab world are scared to be different. So if you want to be different, be different because it will shine, you will shine differently. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think, well, yeah, I hope <laughs> the, the listeners and the viewers, uh, I, I, I will say this, femininity is an artistic word like masculinity, like love, and it will always be vague. But I hope that this kind of conversation also sheds some light onto the beauty of a, a variation of ways to be feminine, not only this way or that way. And I think one of the main points is talking about kindness, talking about mannerism, talking about how you speak, talking about being yourself, I have three awesome. women in front of me that are very much themselves, so that's yes. beautiful, you know? So thank well, you. And I think your man bun is very masculine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, ladies. Shukran. Thank you. Thank, thank you for so having us. I love that you have a clapping audience. Thank you.